I think we're good. Computers are hard. All right. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Matt Oswalt. I'm here with uh, my good friend David G, colleague, uh, but friend before that. Uh, we've, we've done some, uh, shall we say, very long uh, hackathons together on trains to Tokyo or what, what, whatever that trip was. Um, so we've been passionate about network automation for a while. Uh, and uh, we, we both, we've, we've both done a lot of work in this space um, coming from like the network operator perspective and then moving into software development and then trying to sort of blend the two skill sets. So basically everything that we've been passionate about for the last four, uh, like four years uh, is driven out of that experience. Um, and as I was thinking for topics uh, for this talk, I was like, man, you know, we, we really need a new way of talking about automation because it's such a, it's such a, um, a, 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 not a binary thing, but it's such a divisive topic. Everybody thinks of automation in a different way. Um, and I started looking at some of the trends in the industry and, and sort of uh, broadly, not, not just within networking, and started thinking about how else we can talk about this conversation that makes it a little more inclusive um, rather than sort of constrain uh, the, the automation umbrella to a, you know, a small subset of tasks and uh, individuals. Um, I, I think there's, there's some value in, in opening this discussion back up. Um, and so uh, what we're going to be talking about today is a topic called uh, network reliability engineering. Um, if you are familiar with the, the model that was popularized by Google a number of years ago, this is uh, another way of looking at site reliability engineering. So we'll, we'll actually talk about the relationship there. Because um, there are some, there's some questions that come out of this that I think are important to, to talk about. Um, before I get started in that, though, uh, like I said, the, the background for this particular topic is uh, <clears throat> me sitting at home and having nothing better to do but watch Twitter and, and argue with people, because that's what I'm good at. Uh, I started thinking, I, I, I see all these, 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 these conversations about automation, uh, and, and I see things that just sort of get me a little, a little you know, peed off. Like, I'm, 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 really, uh, I'm, I'm really looking at the, the things that are said about you know, particular workflows and tasks, and I'm like, you know, screaming into the void, but you know, nobody's listening. So I'm, I'm trying to sort of level set with, with, with myself and just understand, um, to step back and say, like, if network reliability engineering is different, what is it different about? Um, one that I really like is uh, automation allows me to do things faster, right? Um, nope, uh, that's not the goal. Uh, and, 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 and I think it's important to talk about the goal versus the symptoms. Um, a lot of what I'm talking about today is about the ultimate goal for what we do, uh, especially in an autom automation context. Um, but the ultimate goal that I think uh, that we're, we're going to talk about today, and we'll make a case for this, is uh, better reliability. Um, I love this one. Um, automation will allow me, I kid you not, and. I just, just as, a, as an aside, I work for a vendor now. I, this is like my first vendor. Uh, I, I, I always hated this <coughs> Second vendor. Cough. Oh, well, okay. Last job was open source. That doesn't count. Um, um, so, so I love this one because this is, this is something that, that vendors like to, to say sometimes. Not all of them, but some of them. Automation will allow you to get rid of your really expensive uh, network engineers. Um, also not true. Um, and then this is, the, this is the one that gets me sort of riled up uh, because we sort of do this to ourselves. We assume that Facebook and Google are the only ones that have the scale necessary to do automation. And I think that sort of puts us in a, puts us in a bind from the get-go because it, it, it makes that assumption that automation is about speed or scale. And I think that if you really think about what it is that you're doing um, uh, with respect to building automation workflows, it's not really what it's about. It might be a nice byproduct. Certainly, if you get to that level of scale, you kind of have to automate. Um, that's definitely true, but uh, there's a big difference between cause and effect there. So not true. Um, just to demystify, uh, for those that, that maybe are looking at automation as one of those things that's just like this mythical, like on a pedestal thing, a lot of, a lot of you don't view that. A lot of you are already involved with this, so that's, that's good. Um, but just to demystify, automation really is just nothing more than your day-to-day -day operations in a form that machines can understand. Um, and I think if you break it down into that level of um, that level of just simplicity, you start to understand like you don't need to boil the ocean. Nothing needs to be done, you know, o o overnight. Um, and, and it's not really something that uh, that, that is uh, particularly difficult to understand. Um, it's just a way of us committing the operational knowledge that we have in our head into a machine form. So the term that I sort of want to talk about, I want to talk through the different principles, and, and, and then David's going to go through some um, examples of specifics like skills. Um, which I think is, is super helpful. Uh, what, are the, what are the principles that make network reliability engineering um, uh, unique and valuable? What is it that we're actually trying to accomplish here when we talk about this new uh, role or quote buzzword? Um, hopefully by the end of this talk, you will agree that it's not really a buzzword. Um, 
and I, I can't claim invention of it, by the way, as, uh, um, as we'll discuss, there's actually companies uh, probably in this room that actually are hiring for this particular job title. Um, so it's, 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 it's happening. And because I don't know how to computer, um, that is happening, so I'm going to tab over to this and uh, talk about this slide before I go back. Uh, computers are hard. I don't know how to use them, actually. Um, so this is, this is an important thing to consider, because any time we talk about a new term, there's always some, some uh, misunderstandings about its origins. Uh, just on Twitter alone this week, uh, complaints about the fact that NRE just doesn't necessarily need to exist. Why do we need this new term? I, I think those are useful concerns, but I want to sort of break that down to make it a little more obvious. Um, if you go through the SRE uh, book that Google published, and by the way, you can buy it, of course, uh, on, on Amazon or whatever, but you can also read it for free online. Um, and so you can go through that, and, and, and uh, in addition to the book, there have been a lot of videos published by uh, folks at Google, SREs at Google, um, as well as a bunch of other uh, industry you know, sort of participants that consider themselves SRE, where they break this down in a very simple way. Um, what is the definition of, or what is the relationship between DevOps and SRE. What they'll say is that DevOps is more of a sense of principles, right? It's a set of principles that we follow um, about working closer together, having operations folks uh, get more, uh, more interested and more involved with uh, doing things that developers do, like writing code and things like that. Um, and, then, and then developers, uh, similarly, and this is super important, um, having them be in that operations role for at least a small amount of their day to day, um, having them be accountable for the code that they write. Um, and so what they'll say is that SRE, uh, and this is sort of like a programming inheritance kind of thing, SRE implements DevOps, right? SRE is a specific implementation of those principles. It's not a separate thing. So if you, can think, of, if you think of DevOps as the set of principles, SRE is a specific individual that, that follows those principles. And similarly, for us, an NRE is no different. Um, it's just a different coat of paint. Because the reality is a network engineer's job, as we all know, is nothing like, uh, you know, like a sysadmin's job. Um, there's just a different set of tools and, and processes. Should there be a little more alignment? Of course, I think everybody can make the argument for that. But just to keep in mind, this isn't really a separate thing. Um, it's a different implementation of the same core principles. Um, and so a lot of the principles that I'm gonna talk to you about today are influenced exactly by that original model. Um, they're not really separate you know, ideals or ethics around um, what it is that defines DevOps. Um, and so order of operations is important when we talk about automation. Um, I think, back to that first myth where I talked about automation is about doing things faster. Um, it, and, and I guess we could do like a show of hands, like does, auto, does, does the idea of doing things faster just utterly terrify you? Because it did for me. Yeah, I mean that's horrifying. Um, our networks, uh, they, you know, uh, as someone who's had to make late night drives to data centers to, uh, to pull up things back in, like that's not, that's not super fun. Um, and so doing that faster, it's like, yeah, it's hard to get really enthusiastic about that. Um, so I think the order of operations is really important. Um, if you focus on reliability as a key sort of value proposition for automation, you accomplish two things. First off, the fire tends to happen less. But also, you often figure out that speed actually is a pretty natural byproduct of reliability. Um, take for instance, you know, software developers, when they write code, you know, they don't necessarily like, you know, edit the web server files live, they go through a sort of CI CD process. Is that CSD process slower than just editing the files live? Sure, it seems slower, right? Um, but organizationally, they actually move much quicker. Because what happens when you're doing things in that sort of regimented way is you're not moving backwards. There's no firefighting. So you don't like do these little sprints forward and then run back because everything's on fire and you need to go fix it. Um, rather, reliability is about overall speed and agility, right? And so you're, you're doing things in a more sort of um, a more reliable way from your operations perspective, um, and as a result, you're able to move faster. So I'm going to talk about the four principles, and then, and then David will talk about the, uh, some specific tools and, and skills I think that are useful in this space. The first one is uh, composition, and I can't claim credit for this. I'll, I'll, I'll credit uh, iOS Sense for this, but these are the, se the seven stages of vendor acceptance, right? I hear you. I see your point. I understand what you're saying. No one has asked for that before. I love that one. I've said it. Um, I'll see what we can do, I'll get back to you, and then of course, it's on the roadmap. Um, fantastic. Um, I've been on the customer side for easily most of my career, and this is like, you um, So the, the point here is that, is that, uh, is that you know, we, 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 we're always in this mode of wanting more functionality out of, out of our infrastructure, whether we're network folks or not. Um, and, and frankly, uh, you know, whether we're talking about the infrastructure we manage or not. 
Um, and I, and I, I'll add only one little one on here, because this is the one, as we move into like this SDN sort of world, uh, in the network automation world, um, there's one that isn't on this slide that, that comes up often, uh, and it's just as infuriating. We have an API! <laughs> Thanks, Fender, appreciate that. Um, cool, I'll totally start writing code for doing the functionality that I want you to do. So uh, this is, this is um, a very fundamental concept in both site reliability and engineering. Like I said, the principles are exactly the same. This is just a different implementation of those principles. Um, the key concept here is automatable isn't the same thing as automated, right? Just because you have the ability to automate something doesn't mean it is automated inherently. And I think that's really important to consider. Um, take, for instance, uh, like any SDN sort of system, uh, an SDN controller. Um, there's a lot of things that an SDN sort of system will help you do that, that you don't need to worry about. Um, things like when a VM knows security policies move with it. Simple stuff. There's really not a reason for you to write scripts to replicate that. There are systems in place that, that sort of make that possible. Um, sort of a non-networking perspective is uh, Kubernetes. Um, similarly, uh, Kubernetes is a, is a platform for um, deploying applications so that you don't have to worry about things like scaling and, um, and policies and things like that. It sort of is built into the framework. Um, and it's really good at doing what it does. Um, but there's always some sort of a gap. And I, I follow the sort of the 80 20 rule for this stuff. Um, my boss, Mike, uh, calls it the automation last mile, and I just sum it up with the term composition. Um, the, the sort of the, the, the big E, one of, one of the things that make the, 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 the E in the NRA sort of a capital E, is that we're actually not automating everything. I think that's a big perception that when you're getting involved with automation, you've got to automate all the things. Um, but actually, NRA is all about intentionally not automating all the things. Um, your time and your energy is a finite resource. Um, there's only a certain amount of time you have to apply to solving problems. Uh, and so going in with eyes wide open and understanding what it is that actually provides value in that perspective, super helpful. Um, and so when it comes to automation last mile, um, you know, basically, like, we're not trying to automate everything, um, but we are recognizing that there's always that 20% gap in between uh, systems that we need to stitch together. Um, and I, I always talk about, like, AWS as an example. Uh, they, they have a, a, a slew of services, and, and everybody sort of loves to have their heads spin, you know, whenever they see the number of services that AWS offers. There's a reason for that. Uh, developers love the fact that AWS offers all those services because those are little microservices that they don't have to write. They write their specific business logic and then use AWS to stitch them together. Now, of course, if they do that, AWS kind of has them on a leash forever. Um, so AWS knows this, but there's value in that. Um, so composition is super important. And going, like I said, going in eyes wide open um, as an NRE, knowing that you won't or shouldn't automate everything is really important. The other thing is, um, is outcomes. Sort of when you think about like, what is the whole point of all this, you know, what is the ultimate desired outcome for the work that I'm doing? Um, and I, I, I like to use this example. This is the AWS Service Health Dashboard. You simply just Google AWS uh, Health Dashboard. Um, and what you see is, is the slew of services that AWS offers, and you get to see, oh, yeah, the green check mark, which are, by the way, stored in Amazon uh, S3. So if S3 is down, <laughs> this actually happened. <laughs> it was hilarious. Um, and, and, and so, yeah, it was, uh, it was beautiful. But I, uh, I, I, I do use this as an, as an example, because I think this is what people are coming to expect for all infrastructure. Um, AWS isn't the only one that does this. Not even, it, like, public cloud isn't even the only one that does this anymore. Um, people are starting to build these kind of services, this service mentality uh, internally. Um, but in contrast, from a network engineering perspective, when you talk about, like, you know, there's, there's, a, there's compute and storage and networking behind all of these things, right? And that stuff isn't, isn't running on clouds. It's running on literal hardware. Um, yet, the abstraction that's offered to customers is this really customer and outcome driven thing. Customers don't care about how well Switch One is doing, how well Router One is doing. Yet, this is sort of the perspective we provide Northbound to our customers on a day to day basis without really thinking about it. Um, and I think getting to that sort of services driven mentality, it's like an outcome driven mentality, was it people actually want out of the network? You know, they don't necessarily want Switch One to be working, that's sort of table stakes. They want something higher level than that. Uh, the third thing is trade-offs. Um, don't go for 100% of the time. And if you read the SRE book, you'll hear about error budgets. Um, this is actually a way of planning for failure and errors um, going in, um, because trying to go for 100% of the time is actually prohibitive. Um, and again, this is the engineering aspect of this. We're not actually trying to make things 100% of the time. We're sacrificing uptime to preserve the greater mission. So if you're outcome driven, you know what it is that your organization expects out of the network, you can actually make trade-offs. I actually don't need to make this particular system super reliable because my effort is best spent over here. Similarly with automation, 
It's not super critical that I try to automate everything. But there's that one workflow that either breaks all the time or makes our lives miserable or whatever. And you focus on that and only, only automate that workflow, at least for starters. Um, and then back to the 80-20 rule. It's important to go in wide, eyes wide open with this as well. Uh, you know, find and assemble what you can. Like, there's no, re there's no, you know, automation isn't about like writing everything from scratch. It's about choosing systems and tools, open source or otherwise, and stitching them together. Uh, and then blameless postmortems. Um, this isn't just a, you know, about daily hugs for engineers. Although some people like that, I, I'm not a hugging person. Um, so uh, this 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 is another one of those terms that sort of gets that connotation of like okay whatever blameless postmortems. But there's there's value in this, and I think the value actually comes from the fact. Um, uh, the, 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 sort of the statement that blameless is not the same thing as accountabilityless. Um, we're still talking about being accountable for our actions, but the key differentiator here is that, is that the blameless postmortem allows us to recognize that failure is actually okay. Um, not encouraged, but it's it's definitely not the you know the thing we should shy away from. Again, a certain amount of failure is good because it means it's a learning experience. And if you treat it like that, that's great. Failing to learn from those experiences or experiencing repeated failure, less okay. So uh, an NRE has the framework in place to sort of learn from uh, failures that do happen. So with that, I'll hand it over to uh, David. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah, that's what I do. I'm going to guess I'm going to see the five minute in a moment, right? So I'll, uh, I'll speed up talking. I always um, I go out to Italy and Germany quite a lot. I speak at this kind of pace, and they stand up and wave their arms as they slow down. So I'm going to not try and burn time. Hopefully, when you see this, you see you automate the coffee. What the hell are you on about, you crazy fool? Um, and the whole point is it's a mental frame. The amount of times I go into a customer meeting or I go to a meetup and the conversation is solely focused on, let's automate the network. It's got as much meaning as this thing. Genuinely, hands up, quick agreement, and I'll read out obviously for the camera who's in agreement. Do you reckon this is a good mental, a mental set? You're being really cruel. If none of you agree with this, I'm gonna burn this and throw it in the bin. Fair enough, all right, we'll come back to that. We'll go on, move on to whatever we take it after. Um, so automation, I try and describe this in a, in a slightly different way. So we talk about cattle and pairs, great. We've got the tools. And what we do, especially inside Juniper, is we go into a customer that's got lots of pets. Their organization's a pet, their network's a pet, their processes are pets. And the mental visualization, yeah, get my words out, visualization for this. Imagine going into a cattle yard, you've got loads of cows, and then there's a dog, and a koala bear, and a squirrel, and they've all got pumps milking. It's great. Um, and what we try and do with automation really is provide you a cow with battery slots. You can use the cattle technology, and the last 20% is a customization bit. And the way we achieve this is through the, through the Unix philosophy. I think this is like 1978, circa era. Build something good, reuse it, have inputs, have outputs. Put it in the chain, um, which takes me down to, the, the, well, if that's composition, the last flow is data flows. Data has to come from somewhere. Data is a currency for this kind of thing. So right now we see data-driven systems, test-driven design, and all these kind of things. Um, without the data, without good blocks to compose, and without the high level thinking, and I, and I want to say realism, we need to get a lot more real about this. There is no wonder product, there will probably never be a wonder product. Uh, with things like AWS, we've got a myriad of services that make perfect sense. And with the network, we've kind of gone, hey, we've got a device, it's a first order system with 30,000 features, and the total combination of those features, if you could do it, is about 500 million, I think, if my, if my maths isn't too shabby on that one. Um, and we kind of say, we don't have any other solutions in this. This is kind of where we are. Take the concepts of network reliability engineering, Take your processes today, and uh, hopefully we can make some, make some good inroads. Uh, thank you. Right. We've got a demo here. Um, I'm running on 3G. I'm not sure it's going to work. I'm going to be very, very hopeful. I'm going to try it anyway. Before we do this, um, I want to cover off IAC. So um, people in the room dealing with a network as if it's a chunk of code. Config files. Wow, for the camera, these are like three or four, five, oh, wow. ten people. Oh, wow. Maybe just really slow. Is this like the end of the day? You need a bit more time? OK. Um, automated testing. Are you testing for syntax and semantics on the things you generate? Or are you pushing it and then testing at the network level? Hand up for the first one. Testing in config files. OK. And then, you know what? Put my blindfold on. I'm going to push it out to the network. Does it work? Be brave. Who's doing this? We've got two fingers there. He's like this. Woo! OK, we've got a good mix. I'm really pleased about this. So thank you for, for being honest here. Um, we're not going to solve the world challenges by this. All we're going to try and do is use the concepts of IEC um, and try and somehow inject testing uh, right into the core of those daily processes. Make it part of what you do. Ah, we all love memes, all right? Code. What does this mean, infrastructure as code? 
doesn't really mean a whole lot, does it? We have a system we humans have built. We have a config system for the system that we've built. Most of the time with automation, we take Ansible, we take some templates, we take some variables, and we regenerate the human version of the state the machine needs to be in. This is where we are today. Um, especially the network has gone through different phases like OpenFlow. A lot of this stuff has completely failed because we're humans and we build things in human ways. I don't think that's ever going to change. Um, yeah, you know what? Treat your infrastructure as if it was code. It, maybe if we can generate these things, if we can test out the network level and assert at the network level, um, you know what? We're going to be a lot more reliable going forward. I'm just going to go really, really quickly through these test comp If you don't want them, I'm, I write software and I, I am terrible at writing tests. I don't. I don't really like them. I do the things that I think are going to fail. And with a network, weirdly, with the automation, I test everything. Every single time I generate something, if I use a variable, if I build some, some config files, if I make an API call, I don't want to just verify the information that's gone down to the control plane. I want to make sure, actually, the network service, the thing that we're trying to build is up and running. How many times do you go, hey, we've got a switch, we've got a reader. We need to test everything. You don't. If you're going to drop one service on that switch, make sure the service is running. That's where your focal point is, is going to be. You're not ever going to have a system which takes every single feature and every single combination. So just be a little bit more focused on this. Um, myself and Matt are all over Twitter. The last few days we've caused some epic arguments, I think it's safe to say. Oh, yeah. and we've had to backtrack a couple of times. And, okay, that's, that's fair enough. Um, this is validation of the validation right here. We share these thoughts. People come back. Amanda, I know you and I have had, have had some exchanges over the past as well. And this basically says, hey, you know what? I'd rather validate over the ability to push config out smoothly. We have to get better at this kind of stuff. This is um, machine control theory. This is open loop versus closed loop. Ah, right, compliance validation. We all work in these, in these areas. I mean, I've worked in you know, kind of defense type scenarios, banking scenarios, insurance scenarios. And the amount of times an engineer goes, I'm just going to go make this really quick change. Should be OK. And then skips out. <laughs> Ticket closed. Good job. Now out of compliance, and if anybody ever came in and did an audit, we'd be shot. So compliance validation, we can obviously, if we, if we treat everything as code, we can test for things that we know what should be in and what shouldn't be in. And you think, okay, well, what if I'm the kind of person I'm just going to ignore that and push it down anyway? We can take that to a whole other level. We can go down to the network and, and grab that data and retest. Think, well, okay, what about, I don't want to be uh, messing around here as a human. I want to be doing this all automatically. So we start talking about event-driven infrastructure, and this is where I think I'm going to run out of time. Uh, unfortunately, if I'm, I'm going to get like a nod of the head. I've got, got three minutes. Three minutes, we, we can make this work. So, event driven infrastructure, we take, I'm hoping this is going to work. Uh, sorry, this has happened again. Let me just flick across. We're working off an online deck and an offline deck because some of the rendering never works. Here we go. Yeah, well, I told you, we, we, we use computers in anger, right? We're not really good at this kind of thing. So, we take signals. A signal comes from a system and it's an emittance of something's happened. Doesn't necessarily mean it's an event. An event is an occurrence of something we're interested in, which one or more signals tell us about. And the idea is that we use rules to identify that combination of signals of, which become events, which turns into business logic. The business logic triggers a workflow, a workflow being an engineering flowchart with a start point, actions, decision points. We tie it together into actions and outputs. Actions and outputs can happen at any point within a workflow. And to do it right, we feed it back around. We close the loop. Um, it's no surprise right now, um, I'm going to speak with an evil vendor hat on right now, I'm, I'm very sorry. Um, there's lots of telemetry effort going into network operating systems, lots of um, GPB type encoding for telemetry. We need data. If data is a currency, we need to be able to gather that data, measure the data, uh, and trend it. Um, so EDI is nothing more than we, we have inputs, we have rules, we have outputs. Uh, we can do really cool things with these things. So we can triage stuff, we have an outage, um, we can say, hey, this is an event, how it's happened, go off to the network, gather our logs. So when a human comes in at 9 a.m., great, all the information's there, we've saved loads of time. Uh, especially with automation, people are always hesitant to let a, a machine loose on the network. Um, with auto-remediation, we can say, well, we, under certain scenarios, we know what we want to do. If it's a compliance issue, we might force the network back into the state it needs to be in. We might not just want a human, human getting in there. Uh, and ChatOps is always an interesting one because it gives us a natural language interface into any automation system. Um, so that, have I got time for the demo? I've got one minute, right, here goes. So, fingers crossed this works. Now what I need to do is just hide all my desktop crap because obviously the resolution's changed and you guys are going to be prodding me online. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to start a service which basically pretends to ping some things. Um, 
Sorry? Just do like a command plus, plus, plus. Yeah, yeah. OK. Right. So this is a piece of software I wrote for demos. Uh, all this is is a, it's a REST-driven um, kind of parallel process, ICMP pinger thing. Goes off, pings the nodes. The nodes are based in groups. If a node fails, it sends a webhook off to a system. In this particular instance, we're using Stackstorm. Um, so what I've got is I've got a very, very basic workflow and a rule that basically says, hey, if this event, this thing I'm interested in, this occurrence of a thing fails, I want to do some triage. I want to create a ticket for the customer, and I also want to send a chat ops message off to the on-call team. It's all very, very straightforward. Now, my laptop is, is absolutely dying on its feet, and I don't want any oscillations here, which happened earlier on. And what I'm hoping to see is when the alarm happens, Give me a second. Is this going to work? Hey, and it worked. How about that? So actually what we have now is if you can see this, the workflow did a database dip. It did the uh, alert, the on-shift team, and it also created a ticket, which means if I go down to Slack, we can see the Slack message from my friendly neighborhood robot called Johnny5. Any 80s kids in the room will appreciate this. Um, mm -hmm. Hey, we've got this circuit called blah, 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 and asked for Mr. IP engineer, obviously that being me, just to give you an idea. There we go. How cool is that? Um, <laughs> And what we also have, uh, where's that gone? Sorry, I've got so many screens open. Um, I should also have a ticket on Zendesk. And there it is. So the ticket's been created. The customer sees that. Now, I appreciate you know, you're not going to use language like further. I didn't really know where I was going with that at the time. I thought it was kind of cool. Um, ultimately, so what happens? Signal comes in, database dip. Two types of information go around, and then the idea is that somebody on call can pick it up knowing the first bit has been handled. This is really, really simple. This is a very, very basic kind of triage exercise, and we can do a lot more complex things. Now, it doesn't necessarily matter what tools you pick. Go with the Unix philosophy. Pick the small ones that do the job well. Consider what you're trying to do. Don't boil the ocean. Don't do that. And I think just to level set this, the, the, the great thing about the event driven is it's just a description of what you do. You would do this in your head or, or manually yourself. So it's not like this is, this is written by an ops person. It's workflows. Um, so it's, it's something that, that you have the knowledge to commit to code. It's not anybody else that has that knowledge. It's you, right? Um, it's not a system that, that replaces you. It's, it's that represents you. Um, and so I think that's an important thing to think about. Yeah, thank you. So um, very, very quick from us. We're used to having like hours for this kind of thing. Um, hopefully that's been interesting. Feel free to reach out on Twitter. So at me at in, at VTEP42. Thank you to Donald for inviting us as well. It's been a long time coming. So thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you, Matt. Thanks. Thanks for this. Keep